Hey, this is Nick with Obsessed Garage and welcome to OG Academy, the series of short videos where we dive into some of the more technical aspects of the things we sell. Today, we're going to be going over how to put together and set up your portable accessory package for the Active 2.0. So what I have laid out before me right here is the ultimate tier of our portable accessory package. If you're not sure uh, which one you need, the basic, advanced, or ultimate, you can go check out our other video we did on the differences between them. Basically all it means is this is the top tier, it comes with the nice mosmatic fittings, it comes with stainless steel hardware, and uh, it's essentially the best. It comes with the PF22 as well. So before we get into anything, it's very important that you inventory everything that comes in your kit. We recommend you do that within the first 30 days of receiving your order. The reason that is, is if anything gets damaged in shipping or is missing, it's better we catch it early because manufacturers, if it's a defect, are more willing to play ball within the first 30 days. Also, our return policy is only extended to 30 days. So we'll start with the garden hose quick disconnects. You're going to get two of them. They're going to come together in the box and I'll show you that motion real quick. They come like this and they come apart into two pieces. You're going to have a female side and a male side, meaning that the threads are internal and external. Uh, so what you're going to want to do, pull them apart and we can get started with assembly. So we're going to start at the inlet of the pressure washer right here. We're going to take our male threaded plug and we're just going to screw it in. The important thing to know about GHT fittings is that there is an internal o-ring that you can see right here. You don't want to get it too tight, you also don't want it to be too loose. Basically the threads are going to press up against it and that's what creates your watertight seal. Please do not use Teflon tape on these as that could cause a leak in itself. We'll take our inlet hose, they're going to come threaded together like this. We're just going to unthread it. There you go. And we'll take the male end and screw on our coupler. And then we can simply plug this in to the pressure washer. So now we'll walk right over to the hose bib and get the other end of the inlet set up. So the same concepts apply over at the hose bib. We're going to take the male end, thread it into our hose, again just hand tight, and the female end, screw it onto our hose bib. We have a nice prior P1114 right here, but any hose bibs, they're all the same. Screw it in, and our inlet side is now done. All right, and that was basically the hardest part of the install from here on. Most things are already done for you. Our high pressure hoses come pre-terminated. The guns have the couplers already on them. It's basically just screwing things in and setting it up. All right, into the outlet side. So we're gonna grab our 14 millimeter M22 plug. This one happens to be a Mosmatic. Uh, when you're using Mosmatic couplers, plugs, or anything, you wanna keep them all the same. So all Mosmatic or all another brand. The reason for that is the tolerances are super tight. So if you mix match couplers, they could potentially leak. So we recommend staying with all Mosmatic or all MTM. An important thing to know about M22 fittings is that they come in two different sizes, a 14 and a 15 mil. The Active 2.0 uses a 14 millimeter. The Active VE56 uses a 15 mil. If you're not sure what size your pressure washer uses, you can take a look at our pressure washer spreadsheet on our website for specific information. So all we're going to do is screw it right here onto the end. Again, only hand tight. This doesn't require Teflon as it has an internal o-ring. All right, and that is it for setting up the active 2.0 pressure washer itself. From here out, everything should be assembled and all we need to do is plug it in and then test it. So let's uh, go ahead and cut our hose open. We recommend using the pliers, not a knife as you could slice through the jacket of the pressure washer hose. Cut that one. Go in. Cut that one as well. And we're ready to get to work. Alrighty, so we will just plug in our hose into that M22 fitting and we can grab the other end of the hose and attach our gun. Now if you were to run water through the unit right now, it would spray right out of the front. So we are going to put a nozzle right on the end of there and we have a water tight system. So now all there is to do is to turn the water on and get to testing. Alright, so let's get the water turned on. Now. You're bound to have a leak somewhere in this system, so we're going to go systematically through each coupler, each connection point, and troubleshoot the problem. 
As you can see right here, we have a leak at the inlet of the pressure washer and the garden hose uh, threads. This is a pretty simple issue. It's probably just because I didn't tighten it down enough or I tightened it too much. So we'll turn the water off, get the water out of the hose, and we'll start to diagnose that problem. So we're gonna unconnect the quick disconnect. And the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is take this plug out and inspect that internal O-ring for any wear or tear. Uh, it doesn't look like it has any, so I know that I probably just didn't screw this in tight enough. So I get it on there. Okay. Now that it's snug down, we're gonna plug the hose in and give it another shot. Yes. Plug it back in. And let's turn the water on for the second time. Now, before we turn the unit on, it's always a good idea to purge all of the air out of your air hose and uh, garden hose as well. So, all we're gonna do is take the gun, pull the trigger, and purge the air out. Once you're not hearing any more popping or any spurts of air just like that, you'll know that your hose is free and clear of air. All right, now that we've ensured there's no leaks in the system, we can go ahead and plug it in. Now, most if not all pressure washers will come with a GFCI uh, plug. Basically what this means is if any water gets in there or there's any sort of short, uh, it will turn the pressure washer off. Now that our hose is free from air, we're ready to turn the unit on. And just like that, the hose and gun is pressurized and ready to use and we're ready to start testing. So one of the main things we're looking at when we're testing is that there's no fluctuations in pressure or flow. So you should be getting a constant stream of water at a constant PSI, meaning that you're not getting a ton and then back down to none and then back up to a lot of PSI. Uh, another thing we need to look out for is that the unit is not surging or repressurizing. So the unit should remain off when you're not pulling the trigger. If it is surging or repressurizing when you're not pulling the trigger, that's an indication that there's probably a leak in the line, usually at one of the couplers. Last but not least, we need to assemble our PF-22 foam cannon. It'll come in a few different pieces, but it's super simple to put together. We're gonna take our pickup tube, we're going to take the housing, plug your pickup tube into the housing. Yep. Then we're going to take our bottle out of the box and screw it onto the housing. Always screw the plastic bottle onto the metal housing, not the other way around, as you could cross thread it and damage the bottle itself. If you do have any problems with the bottle cross threading or anything over the lifespan of it, we do sell replacement bottles on our website. And that about wraps it up for the ultimate portable solution for the Active 2.0. Know that the same procedures apply for all tiers of the portable solution, so the basic, advanced, and ultimate. And uh, you can find everything we talked about in this video on our website at ObsessedGarage.com. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please do let us know down below or reach out directly at support at ObsessedGarage.